Up, he's the designated hitter. John Valentin once again gets the call to third. Mike Greenwell out in left field tonight. Rudy Pemberton first start in a while in right. Bill Hasselman continues his duties behind the plate. And Darren Bragg will hit out of the number nine hole tonight and play center field. The defense tonight for the Detroit Tigers, they have 13th in the league, 127 errors in 151 games. Phil Nevin will be at third base, Travis Fryman the shortstop, Alan Trammell at second, and Tony Clark at first. Left to right, Bobby Higginson, Camara Bachi, and Melvin Nieves. Brad Osmus behind the plate, and on the mound, rookie sensation, I, <laughs> Justin Thompson. I guess, I don't know about sensation yet, he's had some problems one and five, but this has been their uh, number one pick from 1991. He's had kind of a check at minor league career with a number of shoulder and elbow injuries his only win this year coming against the Kansas City Royals he's trying to stop a three-game losing streak he throws hard he's got a good fastball curveball and a changeup and he is facing the Red Sox for the first time tonight and this is the first look any of the Boston hitters have had at uh, Justin Thompson if Fry will lead it off Fry hitting at 296 on the year four home runs they all came last month and 34 runs batted in First offering from Thompson is a fastball up high. He features the fastball, a breaking ball, and also they said to have a very good changeup. Has been a strikeout pitcher in the minor leagues. Missing down low, and the count two balls, no strikes. One of the problems he's had, obviously, the base on balls. 24 walks in 45 innings, but he does have 36 strikeouts. 23-year-old left-hander out of San Antonio, Texas, catches the inside corner. And his two balls and a strike. Tim McClellan is our plate umpire tonight. Fry pops it up. Alan Trammell playing second base for the Tigers tonight will make the catch. And this one out from the Red Sox here in the top of the first. So one going for the Sox. That'll bring up the shortstop, Nomar Garcia Parra. Garcia Parra checks in a 220 average on the year, had one home run. That came in his first major league start. And the West Coast trip at Oakland against the A's, six RBIs for Garcia Parra. Fastball is up high. Garcia Parra got off to a quick start for the Red Sox at the plate, but as you know, has struggled since. Hitless in his last 14 times at bat, and just four for his last 31. And looking for his first hit against a left-handed pitcher. He's 0 for 9 against lefties so far this season. Thompson missing down and away. Red Sox start the night five and a half games behind the Orioles in the chase for the wild card. Sox come in 77-73 on the year. And ten of those victories and only one loss coming against the Detroit Tigers. They have just dominated Detroit. They're 5-0, the Sox are, in this ballpark. 3-1 the count. Well, you can see maybe why Thompson has had uh, so many shoulder and elbow problems in his brief minor league career. He really is an upper body pitcher. He does not use his legs very much to drive. Powell back and that'll run the count full. He missed the entire 1994 season with an elbow problem. He spent some time on the disabled list this year. It is Major League debut on uh, May 27th in Kansas City and reported some soreness in his shoulder after the start and was placed on the 15 day DL. And one of the young pitches at Buddy Bell and Randy Smith, the general manager, trying to develop here in Detroit. Up high for ball four, so Garcia Parra. Works a one-out walk here in the first. Walks, of course, can be a big problem in this ballpark, much like they are at Fenway Park. Buddy Bell, who had an 18-year, stellar 18-year career in the Major League with the Indians, Texas Rangers, among other teams. Gavin Kennedy, the skipper of the Red Sox. Kennedy has the jacket on. It's cool in Detroit tonight. Mo Vaughn looks at a breaking ball for a strike. 
Tigers infield again, putting the shift on, even with the hard throwing left hander on the mound. Phil Nevin, uh, third baseman at shortstop right now. Travis Fryman, Trammell, and Tony Clark all on the right side of the infield. Up and in on Mo. That evens the count of one and one. So do not take your eye off the plate right here, Jerry. Nope. That combination, lefty against lefty, that's uh, prime for this booth. They're about 60 feet away. Which is a great view, but sometimes it's a little close for comfort. Is attention being paid to Garcia Parr over at first base. There's our booth. There's the screen, and you look right down on home plate. You can hear conversations. It's a great place to watch a ball game. A little safer, though, from our vantage point when you have a right-handed batter up. Runner at first takes off, pitches a ball. Osmus throw is not in time, and Garcia Parra has a stolen base. First stolen base for Garcia Parra in his uh, major league career. Good combination. The big high leg kick from Thompson, and of course, he also had the advantage of the breaking ball. Slide by uh, Garcia Parra a little bit early at second base, and of course, with the infield is wet this time of the game, sometimes you stick in the mud, but. Uh, Fortunate enough to make it to second base and get in the scoring position for Vaughn. Balls behind Mo now. Three balls and a strike. Vaughn one for four. Picked up an RBI in the ball game last night. Vaughn now with 134 runs batted in for the Red Sox this year. Best on the Red Sox all time list. And inside again, that's ball four. And I don't think Mo realizes it. And maybe it's not ball four. I don't know. It's 3 1 on the scoreboard. That would have been ball four. Mo's not going anywhere, it doesn't appear. So maybe somewhere along the line, the scoreboard operator and us uh, got crossed up. Must be the case because now they flash up three balls, two strikes on the scoreboard. So Vaughn continues. Inside fouled away, and the count remains full on Vaughn. A little different uh, infield setup now, obviously, with Garcia Parra at second base. Nevin has to move close to the third base, which gives Vaughn the whole shortstop hole to work with. That's a uh, Obviously, if Nevin stayed where he was, the guy see Parra could walk to third base with a stolen base. Sox trying to jump on the Tigers here in the Motor City early tonight. Just like last night when they picked up a pair in the first inning. Payoff pitch again for Vaughn, rocked up the middle. Trammell, or that's not Trammell, that's Fryman going across the diamond to get Mo Vaughn. Had an idea there of taking a shot at third base. See if Mara conceded third and Vaughn is tossed out at first. I think uh, I think he would have had him at third base, but uh, decided to get the sure out at first base this early in the ball game. Travis Feynman playing right up the middle against Vaughn. He'll take a base hit away, so the switch does work against Vaughn. Maybe he could not see the third baseman. Sometimes you get trapped in behind the runner going to third base, and instead of making the throw, he'll take the sure out at first. Brings up Jose Canseco with Garcia Parra now at third base and two outs. Great numbers for uh, Canseco this year, considering all the time that he's missed. One ball, one strike. Originally injured his back during batting practice. July 26th in Minnesota was on the DL. For quite a long time as he sends this one high and foul down the left field line. Seiko is out for August the 1st through the 17th of September with a ruptured disc. Into the lineup last night. It's amazing how quickly guys get back now from back surgery. Remember a few years back, Jeff Reed, Red Sox relief pitcher, who was back very quickly. And Quite honest with you, I didn't think we'd see Canseco the rest of this season. And fouled down the right field. I think it's important to get him back. I mean, it answers a lot of his questions. 
questions. You're always wondering when you come back from an injury how you're going to feel. This way he doesn't have to spend the winter wondering about it. Well, the other thing, too, Bob, as we talked about, uh, I'm sure the New York Yankees and the Orioles, who the Red Sox have to play and may have a, may decide on who wins the American League East, uh, prefer to have Conseco not around. Osmus smothers that one. And that evens the count of two balls, two strikes. Yankees and Orioles dueling tonight in the Bronx. Red Sox, by the way, have the best record in the American League since the All-Star break. Of 130 of their last 44 ball games. Obviously, represent a great threat to both the Yankees and the Orioles as they battle down the stretch. Eight games remaining with New York and two with Baltimore. Fireworks in New York last night with that ball game rained out in the bottom half of the first inning. George Steinbrenner not happy about it. Seiko grounds this one down the third baseline. Nevin will handle it. Nevin across the diamond to Tony Clark, and that will retire the side. So for the Red Sox, no runs, no hits in the inning. They leave Nomar Garcia Parr at third base. Sox fail to score. The Tigers are coming up. Who's on the side of this tonight? Bob Higginson leads it off the Tigers. He'll be in left field. Alan Trammell playing second base for Detroit tonight. Ruben Sierra, formerly of New York Yankee fame, is the designated hitter. Tony Clark bats cleanup for Detroit. Travis Fryman gets the call to short tonight. Melvin Nieves patrols right field. Phil Nevin is the Tiger third baseman. Brad Osmus handles the duties behind the plate. And Kim Barty is the center fielder. He will bat number nine. Defense tonight for the Red Sox. John Balance in at third base. No more Garcia par of the short. Stop. Jeff Fry at second. Mo Vaughn at first. Left to right. Mike Greenwell, Darren Bragg, and Rudy Pemberton. Bill Hasselman behind the plate. And on the mound, looking for career win number 192 is Roger Clemens. 3.82 ERA is seventh best in the American League. Clemens uh, has 219 strikeouts, which of course leads the league. And he has been awful tough this year on the Tigers. He is 2-0 with a 1.13 ERA. And in 16 innings, he has 23 strikeouts against the Detroit Tigers this season. And, of course, just needs the one win to tie Cy Young's all-time Red Sox record of 192 wins. He'll have uh, two more starts this season after tonight. Yeah, they're going to pitch him in uh, Sunday's ball game, uh, one of the games Sunday in New York. And then, of course, he'll make his... Uh, final start of the season at Fenway Park next week uh, against the New York Yankees again. So two games against the Yankees and one against the Tigers. Well, speaking of the Yankees, you might uh, tell you to make this addition to your television schedule. The game on uh, Sunday afternoon will be carried here on Nesson. There's a day-night doubleheader in New York on Sunday, and Nesson will carry the 2 o'clock game on Sunday. A game that had previously been rained out. That's the makeup, and Nesson will have a telecast for you at 2 o'clock on Sunday afternoon. So we're all set to go here. Bottom half of the first inning, Bob Higginson leading it off for Detroit. 320 on the year. 24 home runs for the young outfielder. Lemon set, and his first pitch is in for a called strike. Clemens got the win last time out against the White Sox, 9-5, to five, but really struggled in that ball game, but uh, toughed out seven innings for the Red Sox, allowing seven hits and five runs. One ball, one strike. Higginson's played pretty well for the Tigers all season long. He's hit especially well since the All-Star break, which is a reversal of form for him from a year ago. as you know, have uh, had a terrible season. They have lost their last 10 games now. And for the fourth time in franchise history, they've lost 100 games or more in a season. This, this year's edition is trying not to become the all-time losingest team in Tiger history. That was in 1952 when they lost 104 ball games. That will scatter us a little bit here. You can count it doing two. Where'd that go, Bob? Down to the left. Okay, because I was ducking behind the monitor. Shot over, right, just shot over this way. We try and hang in there as long as we can, but uh, usually it isn't very long, is it? 
Here's Rockets 2-2 pitch. Ground ball right side. Nice big room service hop there for Jeff Fry. And there's one out. Again, Sunday. Nessa will have a 2 o'clock game. The first of the day-night doubleheader will be on the air. At 2 o'clock on Sunday afternoon, Red Sox and Yankees. That'll be the third game of that four-game series. Looking forward to the trip to the Bronx. Eight of the Red Sox final ten games this regular season against the Yankees. Alan Trammell, the Tiger hitter. It's a ball one. And will 231 on the year, which figures to be his last in Major League Baseball. One homer and 14 runs batted in. His longtime double play partner, Lou Whitaker, retiring at the end of last year. Off the glove of Garcia Parr at short and trammel the board for the Tigers. Score to base hit. Throughout Trammell's career, he has really handled Clemens well. A 371 batting average against Roger throughout uh, Trammell's and Clemens matchup throughout the years. As Trammell had been disabled, list, had ankle surgery just recently coming off. Even if Garcia Parra makes that backhanded play clean, I doubt that he's going to get Trammell at first base. Look, that last hop really exploded on the hard infield here in uh, Detroit. Well, Ruben Sierra, the switch hitter, steps in for the Tigers. They picked him up in their trade with the Yankees. He got his contract. The Yankees responsible for Cecil Fielders. 52 overall on the year for Sierra. 12 homers and 70 runs batted in. Had a big hit in the ball game last night to drive in a couple of runs. A double to the opposite field. Two runs last night representing the Tiger offense. Sox winning game one of the series 4-2. One other thing to watch tonight with Clemens, he has 2,552 career strikeouts, and he can move past uh, Jerry Kuzman, who is 17th on the all-time list, over at first base. It's Clemens' second start of the year here in Detroit. He beat the Tigers 11 to 4 back here on July the 11th, working the first seven innings in that ball game, winning at the time his fourth game of the year. He goes, and that's called a strike by Tim McClellan. The count is even now, two balls, two strikes. I would imagine Ruben very happy about uh, going from a first place ball club, the Yankees, uh, to the Tigers, and I don't imagine that uh, Ruben's stay here in Detroit would uh, last very long. The trade was one of those situations where the Yankees were going to get us a fielder's hefty contract, and they weren't about to have that and have to pay Sierra as well, so Sierra was shipped here to Detroit. Shopped around during the offseason. Very promising player at one time when he came up with Texas. Runner at first goes. Sierra swings and misses. And down on strikes goes Sierra. Trammell in at second base. Split finger fastball doing the honors for Clemens as he picks up his first strikeout of the night. Like Hasselman, I think it was a foul tip, and then Hasselman had a little bit of difficulty getting the ball out of the glove. See, right in the webbing of the glove, and no chance at all to make a throw at second base as uh, Alan Trammell picks up his sixth stolen base. It's always nice to run the second and know there's not going to be a throw. Tony Clark bats for the Tigers and swings and misses. Clark has turned into the everyday first baseman on this ball club, putting up some pretty good numbers. He's played every game at first except one since the Tigers ship Cecil Fielder to the Yankees back on the 31st of July. Sunday here against Baltimore, he lofted one out of Tiger Stadium. Clemens struck him out three times the first time that uh, he met Tony Clark, and all three times on the high fastball. Clark is an excellent low ball hitter. Alan Trammell at second base, two outs, scored his ball game here, bottom half the first. 
Here's the one one from the rocket. Catches the inside corner for called strike two. Clark was saying in the papers today that uh, he wants everybody in his team to look around and see how bad this feels right now. The way that they're playing and hope that they never have to go through this again. All these young players are on the Detroit Tiger Ball Club. is late waves and misses and Clemens has his second strike out of the inning and that'll do it for the Tigers here at the bottom of the first no runs one hit and we're scoreless after one weeknights on the Discovery Channel why are they being a key cost only $2.39 a month to keep your cost of driving down see your neighborhood Chevy dealer about the U97 Lumina at Tiger Stadium. No score after one inning. Let's take a look at the strikeout leaders in the American League. Roger Clemens updated with 221. Kevin Apia 197. Chuck Finley's dropped the third at 189. Alex Fernandez and Mike Cena round out the top five in the American League. Young left-hander Justin Thompson all set to face the Red Sox here. Top half of inning number two. John Ballantin looks at a cold strike. Ballantin followed by Mike Greenwell and then Rudy Pemberton. This for Justin Thompson, the young Tiger left-hander. This is his last three starts now. He's faced Mike Mussina of Baltimore, David Cohn of the Yankees, and now Roger Clemens of the Red Sox. Might as well face the best. Fly ball off the bat of Ballantin. Higginson charging in from left field. Back the shortstop, Travis Freiman, to make the catch. And there's one out here to open the second. Well, Travis Fryman moved over to shortstop a couple of months ago. First time he's played there in a couple of years and still undecided on what uh, they're going to do with Fryman next year, whether he'll be the starting shortstop or again move back to third base. Phil Nevin has done a pretty nice job since being called up from the minor leagues. Long time Tiger shortstop. Alan Trammell, as mentioned earlier, playing second. Now that Mike Greenwell bats for the Red Sox and takes a cold strike. Two seventy six on the year seven homers forty three runs batted in Wings and misses and Greenwell down on the count 0 and two big players association meeting today with the Red Sox at their team hotel Don fear was addressing the Red Sox ball club up until about four o'clock ball chased by Greenwell and he's down on strikes Mike Greenwell being uh, one of the player representatives for the Red Sox. Uh, say very much after the meeting. You'll see the good curveball here from Thompson striking Greenwell out on three pitches. That's his first of the night. Running the Greenwell, some of the hangups uh, still remain uh, time for players. Lost time during the strike. And of course, the hang up with the ball clubs and the fans next year right now has been that proposed interleague schedule because That's they're getting right. to the point where they're going to have to get the schedule out for next year. And unless there's an agreement with the Players Association, that'll have to be scrapped and it's back to a conventional schedule again for 97. One ball, one strike on Rudy Pemberton. as you know slated to play the National League East next year highlighted by a trip by the Atlanta Braves to Fenway Park but they may have to be put on hold for another year well I predict things are going to work out and they're going to work out within the next couple of weeks well I hope you're right Anderton fouls the back two balls two strikes Justin Thompson, 23 years of age, out of San Antonio, Texas. Full count on Pemberton. Hasn't been able to go very deep in games, four or five innings per start. They like to keep him around 100 pitch limit because of some of the injuries he's had. Chopped up the middle. Simon can't come up with it. Winds up in center field. It's a two-out single for Rudy Pemberton. It was the first Red Sox hit of the night. 
time between games for Pemberton making his fourth start in right field uh, tonight. Last time he played was on the ninth against Milwaukee. He was 0 for 4 in that ball game and picks up the Red Sox first hit in this game. The Tigers going to the left-hander Thompson tonight, and they got another young left-hander, Trevor Miller, getting a start here tomorrow afternoon. That'll be a 1:15 start. Here from the Motor City is Bill Hasselman. Is the batter now for the Red Sox? Well, Hasselman's had a little duty as of late, hasn't he? This is his 15th straight start in the absence of Mike Stanley. Done a fine job. Red Sox players that can run, and certainly Pemberton has speed. Uh, we'll try to take advantage of that slow delivery to home plate from Thompson. So I got see a power do it back in the first inning. Bold strike on Hasselman. Hasselman had a couple of hits in the Red Sox win here last night. A lot of empty seats here at Detroit, as you saw in that shot over to first base. A big ballpark seating 52,416. And last night they sold about 8,800 tickets and they had about 3,900 in the seats. And a long summer here in the Motor City. Tigers coming into this one tonight. 51 and 100 on the year. Hot shot under the dive there of Nevin into left field. And so the Red Sox are kicking up their heels with two outs here in the top of the second. Four straight games now for Hasselman. Bad pitch there by Thompson. He had Hasselman no balls and two strikes through a fastball right down the heart of the plate, and Hasselman jumped all over it for the base hit. Once again, I mentioned that this infield much, much quicker now than it's ever been here at Tiger Stadium, or at least through the Sparky Anderson regime. So the balls get through here just a bit quicker. I think when Sparky was here, they only mowed the grass about two or three times all summer. Yeah, and it was all sand at home plate, and uh, it was like quicksand. With the left-hander going tonight, Darren Bragg dropping down to a number nine spot in the batting order. It's a ball strike. That certainly has been a spark plug. Well, the Red Sox have really improved since he came over in that trade with Seattle for Jamie Moyer. Look there at Pemberton at second. Hasselman at first with the two outs. And Bragg down to the left-hander now 0-2. Well, when he got Greenwell 0-2, he went to the big breaking curveball to pick up the strikeout. back to the upper deck 0 and 2 the count and again another 0 2 pitch right down the heart of the plate here's the two strike pitch again that's the breaking ball not chased by Bragg one ball two strikes. have a little three game trip to Milwaukee over the weekend that's their only road action left they are closing with 15 of their last 18 here in Detroit this is the Red Sox final road swing of the year ending up of course this weekend in New York and then back to Fenway to close the season two balls two strikes Sox have Pemberton at second Hasselman at first two outs scoreless ball game here in the top of the second Here's the 2-2 from Thompson. Sawed him off. And Thompson will throw him out at first base. Sox threatened but failed to score. They leave a pair. Still nothing, nothing after one and a half. Hey, Jordan. 
Bottom of the second here at Tiger Stadium. Still no score between the Red Sox and Tigers. Log on to the official website of the Boston Red Sox at www.redsox.com on the internet for timely information. Get current scores, game recaps, player stats, and news. Check out the virtual view from your seat in the park with the interactive Fenway Park seating chart. Plus, play the interactive game that allows you to manage your own Sox roster. Keep up with the Sox this season online at www.redsox.com. It's a whole new ball game. It's a scoreless ball game here in the Motor City tonight. Roger Clemens set to work against the Tigers here in the bottom of the second. Travis Fryman to lead it off. Melvin Nieves and Phil Nevin to follow. Hasselman once again catching Roger Clemens tonight. Well, Hasselman doing all the catching now for the Sox down the stretch. So battery has hooked up numerous times this year as this one sliced foul by Travis Fryman. The count is even now one and one. Numbers for Fryman as he approaches a hundred RBI season. A lot of speculation before the trading deadline that maybe Fryman would be traded by the Tigers, but the, they elected to keep Travis around. I can see why. Two strikes. Obviously, Travis Fryman, not uh, as old as Cecil Fielder, still very young, and uh, with a team that's going to young players, uh, Fryman can be a leader for this ball club. And he wasn't making nine million dollars a year either, which made it a little easier to keep him around. Tigers were shopping Fielder for a long time, trying to get someone to take that uh, contract mistake off their hands. Actually, Cecil's done pretty well for himself so far in New York. This will be chased down by Hasselman. Has to make the play there at first and just does get Travis Fryman. So Lemons picks up his third straight strikeout. That's a heck of a play there by Hasselman. Fortunately, he got the break of the ball going up the first base line. And of course, Fryman running between the two white lines. That's perfectly legal. So Hasselman had to get himself in a position, and so did Mo Vaughn to where they could uh, get the out at first base. Watch Vaughn stretch out in foul territory. There's the throw from Hasselman, and they get Fryman at first. A lot of times you see a catcher rush that ball, throw it right over the head of the first baseman. So well done by both Hasselman and Mo Vaughn. Melvin Nieves takes strike one. 50 on the year for Nieves. That is the 20 home run mark. He has 21 on the year to go with 55 runs batted in. It was George Brett that made the interesting comment the other day with all these people that uh, McGuire has 50 home runs. You have a number of 40 home run hitters. Obviously a number of 30 and all those players this year hitting better than 20. George said wait till the owners start having to pay these guys based on these numbers. A record number of home runs hit in Major League Baseball this year. Then they'll raise the mound again to 20 feet high. <laughs> Deaden the ball. <laughs> Soften up the baseball. Build huge stadiums. Down on strikes goes Nieves. He's called out on strikes, and the Rocket now has racked up four in a row. Well, that ties him now with the Jerry Kuzman for 17th on the all-time list. Looks like it might just be the split-fingered fastball again here, tailing away from Nieves. For already, he had 13, which is a season high earlier this year against the uh, Detroit Tigers. That was back in May. Lemon set to go to work now against Tiger third baseman Phil Nevin. Great location strike one. Next target now for Clemens once he gets by Kuzman Bob Fella who is 16th on that list 2,581 strikeouts. Corner again, strike two. That'd be a terrible feeling as a hitter to be down to Clemens, no balls, two strikes. Well, it all adds up, Bob. The uh, Detroit Tigers obviously lead the league in strikeouts so offensively, and Clemens. Uh, the leader in strikeouts in the American League, so it could be another big punch-out night for him. Now an even 
two and two. He's logging 191 career wins in this one tonight. 13 of which over the years have come at the expense of the Tigers. Here's the 2-2 from the Rockets. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Strikes out the side. Fryman, Nieves, and Nelvin. Three up and three down. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. We've completed two here in the Motor City, and we're scoreless. Come to Friendly Fenway for Laureate's Day, September 25th. Tiger Stadium, still no score. You see that Bruins shirt. Well, the Boston Bruins comes your way Friday at 7.30 as the Bruins face off against the Montreal Canadiens live from Providence. Join Brenda Brennan, Gord Kluzak, and Dale Arnold for all the action this Friday live at 7.30 p.m. here on Nesson. You take it to Boston Bruins hockey. Underway, so are we here? The top half of the third now. Jeff Fry is stepping in against the young left-hander Justin Thompson. Fry, Garcia, Parr, and Bourne. Ball strike on Jeff, who popped up to the second baseman Alan Tremble back in the first inning. Thompson drops in strike two. Began the year with the Tigers. He was with Detroit in spring training. The Tigers let him go. Signed on with Oklahoma City and the Rangers system, and then, of course, made his way to Boston. He's been a major contributor to the Red Sox success this year. Down on strikes here to open the third. Well, there's no question that the Thompson has good stuff. He's got a good live fastball. You'll see this ball rise up and out of the strike zone. And Jeff Fry, not an easy man to strike out. He's got the good curveball. We have yet to see a changeup from Thompson, but they say that's one of his best pitches. Garcia Parra, hitless in his last 14 at bats, did walk and reached back in the first inning. Stole second, about as far as third base, but the Sox couldn't get him home. And even a ball and a strike. Garcia Parr, of course, spent a good share of this year on the disabled list from uh, mid April right through the middle of July with a hamstring tendon tear behind his left knee. Played very well at Pawtucket and called up by the Red Sox right before the uh, first of September. They could get him on the possible playoff roster. One-two pitch lifted in the air to center field. Barty. A lot of room here in center field at Tiger Stadium. One of the old ballparks, and it's 440 to straightaway center. Garcia Parr, of course, get that one to shallow center. That looked like the changeup from Thomas as we look at the 440 uh, straightaway center field. Thompson with the changeup that time to Garcia Parr and really had him out on his front foot. 440. That's a long way. There were some of the dimensions like that in the old ballpark, circa Tiger Stadium in Fenway Park, old Vaughan. Rounding this one to second base. Trammell takes care of one. Thompson takes care of the Tigers. One, two, three here in the third. So we've completed two and a half. And we're scoreless from Detroit. I got you see. Okay. Chips, pretzels. Bottom of the third was still scoreless at Tiger Stadium. Go to a participating Burger King in New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. Purchase a Red Sox photo ball baseball and receive a Whopper sandwich free while supplies last. Collect all four photo balls with Roger Clemens, Jose Canseco, Mike Greenwell, and Mo Vaughn. I have the Clemens one. I've yet to get Canseco, Greenwell, and Vaughn, but I will get that while supplies last. You ought to be going out and getting a couple Whoppers here quickly. Stand in line and see if you can pick up the other three, right? That's right. Big night tonight for Roger Clemens. That's where he stands all time now, passing Jerry Kuzman with Bob Feller standing straight ahead. Clemens has struck out five in a row. Five total for the ball game as Brad Osmus leads off for Detroit here in the bottom of the third. One strike. 
Clemens. He has been ahead of the hitters all night, certainly. I'm sorry, Bob. That was the 11th time last inning that Clemens has struck out the side, the 104th time in his career that he's done so. It seems like everything in the last inning or so has been a strike from Rocket. Just painting that outside corner. Strike one, strike two, and then mow him down. Osmus in the hole, quickly 0-2. Inside, two balls, two strikes. Bad news for the Tigers. Uh, Felipe Lira, who did a nice job last night in the game against the Red Sox, tough luck pitcher, uh, broke his wrist during batting practice. I guess got hit with a, a batted ball, broke the wrist. I imagine that's the season for him. Also, a report on Mark Lewis, who was hit in the helmet last night by Aaron Seeley. Went over overnight for observation at the Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit. Tried to come back to the ball club tonight, but had a headache in the clubhouse and was sent home. So Lewis not available for the Tigers tonight. The Rocket launches 2 2, and Osmus sends it high and foul. And got towards the third deck here in Detroit, the old football press deck. Back in the days when the Detroit Lions played here, but that goes back a long, long time ago. By the way, it was the left wrist of uh, Lira that was broken. I mean, they used to play here. Who played here? Detroit Lions. Through, uh, I think they left here about 20 some years ago, though. Moved about to Pontiac, and are now moving back to Detroit. The side by side stadiums for the Tigers and the Lions. I remember watching the Thanksgiving Day games here from Tiger Stadium. The Lions always involved in the Thanksgiving Day uh, football game. Was chopped to short. Garcia Parra throws him out. There's one out. I guess just about what? Two miles from this location is where the uh, new uh, ballparks are going to be eventually built. Tiger's uh, new Tiger Ballpark and, of course, uh, a new park for football, which should revitalize the downtown area like it did in Cleveland. That's what they're talking about. The ballparks are just about side by side. Yeah. Here's Kim Barty, the number nine hitter for the Tigers. You know, it's interesting we talk about the Lions playing here. You've been inside the baseball clubhouses here, obviously. You know how small they are. Can you imagine an NFL team dressing in there? Bob, even worse than this is Cleveland. I can't imagine how they get a football team to dress in those Cleveland clubhouses. They are, they're smaller than the ones here in Detroit. Because they don't have to worry about that right now, but... Uh, they used to ask the clubhouse guy, the Billy Sheridan, uh, how they worked that, and he used to come in in shifts to get taped and uh, do different things because there just wasn't enough room. The same situation, I wouldn't think, would have prevailed back when they played football at Fenway, the visitors' clubhouse there, because it's been a number of years since uh, football has been played at Fenway Park. Well, I can tell you what, the visitors' clubhouse at Fenway is massive compared to the one in Cleveland. <laughs> Marti goes down on strikes. So Clemens now with a half a dozen. He did mowing down the Tigers. Again, the split fingered fastball uh, doing the honors for Roger Clemens. Ball is in the dirt, so Hassan will have to throw the ball to first base to get Marti. Clemens has been absolutely awesome this year against this Tiger Ball Club. 23 strikeouts coming into the game in 16 innings. Six already in the game now and only in the third inning. And the Rocket has retired the last seven Tigers and struck out six of them. There's Bobby Higginson at the top of the order. Takes ball one. Higginson with the ground ball to second base, his first at bat, leading off the Tiger first. Tigers have just one hit, the infield single by Alan Trammell. Swing and a miss by Higginson. Actually, Bob, this had to be a great stadium to watch a football game in. Oh, it was. Yeah, they, what they do, run it from uh, right field to first base? No, it was, left from, field, it was from first base, yeah, first base to left field. Left field, yeah. The 
bleacher seats. Used to, we used to call them coaches corner seats. The upper bleacher seat, seats for baseball actually were not bad football seats. Those are the days, of course, when a lot of the NFL clubs and Major League Baseball shared the same stadium. It doesn't happen much anymore as Higginson fouls the back. Two balls, two strikes. really is Fenway Park Sister Stadium. They both opened the exact same day, the 20th of April, 1912. And there's no comparison between the way Fenway has been kept up and uh, Tiger Stadium. Pitch here from Clemens and Higginson lines it foul back to the upper deck. This battle between the Red Sox and Tigers tonight here in the Motor City. I'll be Higginson batting for Detroit with the bases empty and two outs in the bottom of the third. Higginson has really, really come on since the All Star break, and one of the reasons he said is been able to use the opposite field. He was trying to pull everything earlier in the season, but he's not afraid to go to the other way now. Here's the 3 2 from the Rocket. Strike three called, and Higginson knew it. Just discards the bat. He'll take off the batting glove and head out to play left field. Clemens picking up strikeout number seven. We're scoreless here after three. Stump turns, shot, saves, rebound, score! Raymond Fork drives it home. 26 this ball game here top half the fourth inning don't forget tomorrow afternoon Red Sox and Tigers will do it again our broadcast gets underway one o'clock here tomorrow Tom Gordon goes against Trevor Miller and again we remind you that game Sunday coming up in New York at two Red Sox and the New York Yankees game three of that four game series carried here on Nesson two o'clock on Sunday afternoon as Jose Canseco and company invade Yankee Stadium shift on for Canseco as uh Similar to Vaughn, except everybody on the left side of the infield. And he hits it a long way here to right field. Back goes Niebis, back at the 370 sign and makes the catch. Penseco gives it a ride to the opposite field, but Melvin Niebis goes right back up against the wall, and Penseco just missed one. I see Jose checking the flags. The wind has been blowing in here the last two nights at Tiger Stadium. And I don't think there's any question it had an effect on this ball. I thought for sure this was going to be the upper deck. And I think Canseco thought so also. Back goes Nieves right to the 370 mark and will take it right in front of the wall. There's one there that certainly the win had an effect on. A breezy night here in the Motor City. Temperatures expected to be down around 50. Before we're done tonight as John Valentin walks a high and foul. Nice sleeping weather. Nice sleeping weather, Bob. Down around 50. You're in a Ritz, so it, it, should, they, it should be no effect, really. It should be every night should be a good night. Well, I'm not the only one in the Ritz. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> There's Valentin straightening one out. Drops a base hit here into center field. They have the big robes here in uh, Detroit like you have in Kansas City. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's check some of the out-of-town scores tonight and what else is going on around Major League Baseball. The big one, of course, the Orioles and the Yankees tonight. We'll be keeping tabs on that one. We'll have highlights for, for you as the evening goes on here from Detroit. One out, one on. And as Valentin will get some attention over at first base, Tony Clark will hold with him. Second time through the lineup now for the Red Sox. Uh, obviously the first time that they have faced uh, Thompson. Well, the Tiger people telling us that Thompson, uh, some of the games that he's pitched this year, tends to start very fast. Pile up a lot of strikeouts early. Well, he only has two strikeouts so far in this one, but then fades. Long about this time, fifth inning. Get 
all the scouting reports on a guy you want, and obviously the Red Sox have scouting reports on uh, Justin Thompson, but uh, until you face him yourself, that's when you really know how he throws. How disconcerting is it for a hitter to go up and face a pitcher for the first time? Well, you prefer to see guys, obviously, that you know and you have uh, known throughout the league for a long time. September at times becomes extremely tough because a number of times you'll see pitches that obviously come out of the minor leagues and you don't know. Usually one or two at bats against them and you get a pretty good idea on how their ball moves, uh, what pitches obviously they have. You know what pitches they have before you begin in the game, but how they're going to attack you. Greenwell, who struck out his first time down on the count 0 2, his throw will go over to first base to hold John Valentin. Fastball misses inside, one ball, two strikes. Really good Greenwell last time on the big curve ball. See if he goes back to it on the one two count. Might be a good pitch to for Valentin to run on it for a space. Valentin holding and Greenwell follows it back our way. One ball, two strikes. Sox with two straight wins. Over Chicago on Sunday, been the first game of the road trip, beating the Tigers here last night, 4-2. Hanging in there as far as the wild card uh, race, five and a half games behind Baltimore. Wellington caught ten times this year. Jerry, the Tigers agreeing with you that this would be a good uh, pitch for Valentin to go on. Well, and he must be wanting to throw the curveball, too, because he's going over there a couple of times. There's the curveball, but it's up and in. Two balls, two strikes. That's why I figured that that would be a good pitch for John to go on. After going over a couple of times, you know Thompson wants to throw the curveball. And it's a good pitch to go on. Holding it's a curveball and it's fouled down the first baseline. That hat comes in handy. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> look at this. I mean, having a tough night. He's got butts coming out of his top pocket. The uh, glasses are down there. Hat came off. There's probably gum in the hat. What's left down on the field here? I don't know. Uh, oh, glasses, another pack of butts, I think. Two again to the Gator, foul back. He's throwing now three straight curve balls. Yeah, and this time Greenwell at least able to get a piece of it and foul it off. <laughs> is, this, is this the instant replay or is that? Well, he went down for a cigarette lighter, that's what it was. And he's all set with his seat in the front row. Okay, I think he's got everything now. Uh, he can sit back and uh, get everything organized and watch the ball game. Greenwell, meanwhile, delivers a base hit to right field. Pretty sharply on the ground to right, and the Red Sox have runners at first and second with one out. What a nice hit bat by Greenwell. He really battled Thompson that time. He threw a lot of breaking balls, fouled them all off. Again, he'll try it away from him, but this time Greenwell will hit the ground ball to the left of Alan Trammell for the base hit. Ball hit so hard that uh, Valentin had to hold up at second base. That's a great at bat by Mike Greenwell, uh, filing off a number of tough curve balls and finally getting one that he could handle. A chance here for Rudy Pemberton, International League All Star, the Paw Sox MVP this year. Plays off that one. One ball and no strikes on Pemberton. Pemberton had a nice year at Cozy McCoy. Elected to the International League All-Star team. 
with the 27 home runs with the Paw Sox. That was fourth in the International League this year. We showed you earlier that 440 foot sign at uh, center field here in Detroit. Well, in Pawtucket, those of you that followed the Paw Sox know that uh, center field wall at McCoy is only 380 feet from home plate. It was a nice, cozy ballpark to hit in. in trouble here. Sox have Valentin at second. Greenwald at first with one out. He's fallen behind Rudy Pemberton 2-0. Oh. Swing and a miss. A little bit that uh, we have watched Pemberton play. It looks like he likes the ball from the middle of the plate in. Slightly open stance. Foul back to our right. Two balls, two strikes. And at least to this point in this at bat, uh, Thompson staying away from Pemberton. Base runners, Valentin at second, Greenwell at first with one out. Scored his ball game here. As the Red Sox bat in the top of the fourth. Trying to hang in there in the wild card chase. Emberton fouls back another. And the ball game we mentioned in New York rained out last night. And uh, George Steinbrenner, not too happy about it, thought that American League President Gene Budig could have been in attendance. Uh, I don't know what Budig would have had to do with the weather. That's what Joe Brinkman, the plate umpire, was saying. And what difference would that make? But it made headlines in the paper. Yeah. Looper here could be trouble for the Tigers. That ball safely. It's a base hit for Pemberton. Scooting around third is Valentin. He's waved home. The throw goes into second. It gets away from Fryman. Coming in from third base now is Greenwell to make it a 2 0 ball game as Pemberton takes third. there for the Red Sox obviously they're going to get one run with Valentin scoring then the throw from Nieves the second base is going to get by Travis Fryman and roll out toward left field that will allow Greenwell to come around and score and give the Red Sox a two nothing lead the right idea by Nieves to try to go to second base and get Pemberton he'll short hop the ball it'll get by Fryman and then Valentin can come in and score. Here's the throw from Nieves. Uh, you see it on one hop to second base. It looks like it got tied up with Pemberton. And then uh, he'll move up a base. Infield in now for the Tigers. I guess that scored a single for Pemberton. He obviously gets only one RBI in the play. Nieves is charged yeah. with a throwing error. Single E9. One RBI for Pemberton. Do nothing lead for the Red Sox. And they've got Pemberton at third base. Just the one out. Tigers with the infield in, and Hasselman just rips it foul. Pemberton's already got five RBI now in the limited playing time that he's had with the Red Sox. Hasselman going back for a new piece of lumber. Plus, obviously, the way Clemens is going, Buddy Bell has to pull his infield in, even though it's early in the ballgame. So far, Clemens has just dominated the lineup for the Detroit Tigers. Red Sox now with a couple of runs, five hits for the evening's work. They got Rudy Pemberton there at third base with one out. Who runs in here in the fourth inning. Bill Hasselman trying to get the ball either through the drawn in infield or deep enough on a fly to drive in the run. It swings and misses at the breaking ball. One ball, two strikes. Five of the last six times that Hasselman's had a man on third base in less than two outs, he's been able to get him in. If he can do it again here, here's the one-two, and that's a sent foul back to the upper deck. Red Sox have just owned the Tigers this year. Ten wins, just one loss. Boston 5 and 0 oh here in the Tigers' den. A 
with that batting average for the Sox too against Tiger pitching this year. Just down and away two balls two strikes. That is slightly higher than what the league is hitting against uh, the Tigers. The league is hitting 295 against his pitching staff. It has been a long summer here in Detroit. Full count now on Hasselman. Five full counts so far for Justin Thompson in this ball game tonight. See Darren Bragg there in the on deck circle waiting his turn. Pitch and through the draw in an infield. A base hit to right field. In to score comes Rudy Pemberton. And the Red Sox lead now 3-0. RBI single for Bill Hasselman. Well, a little different second th time through the lineup uh, against Thompson. Hasselman again with a good at bat. Just reaches out, punches the ball, hits it hard by Alan Trammell, and the Red Sox pick up the third run of the inning. Fastball away from Hasselman. He'll cover the plate. Head right down on the baseball. Uh, Chandler went into the dive, but he really had no chance to make that play. Rick Adair, the pitching coach, out to uh, talk with the, the young pitcher. Hasselman has really done a job against uh, the Tigers this year. Came into the game four for seven against Tiger pitching. And he's two for two tonight. So Rick Adair. Filling in for John Matlack, who has been given the leave of absence for the Tigers for personal reasons for the rest of the year. There, the Tiger pitching coach is the, the youngster, Justin Thompson, one of the big prospects for Detroit, learning to pitch here at the major league level. Learning on the job. Aaron Bragg hits for the Red Sox. Bragg looks at one down and away. Don't forget, 1 o'clock here tomorrow afternoon on Nesson, Tom Gordon locks up with Trevor Miller. Final meeting between the Tigers and the Red Sox here in the 96 season. Downstairs again to Bragg. Done pretty well, hasn't he, over the last half dozen games? And high for ball three. He's had a tough time against left-handed pitching, but uh, Kennedy keeps him in the lineup because of his defense. Uh, dropped him to ninth in the batting order, uh, moved Fry to the number one spot. Is C.J. Nikowski starting to loosen up? Ball four puts Bragg aboard and pushes Hasselman down to second. That's the second walk issued by Justin Thompson. Today. Now see, it seems like the base hit by Hasselman just took all the starch out of Thompson. Uh, he's got a left-hander at the plate who struggles against left-handers and ends up walking him. He's followed the Detroit scouting report. Fast start, and then uh, we'll start to lose it a little bit in the middle innings. And now he's got Hasselman at second. Bragg at first. Three runs in for the Red Sox here in the fourth. And back to the top of the order and Jeff Fry. Fry looks at ball one. So that's five straight now out of the strike zone. Well, when you look at the starts for Thompson, he went five innings in a game that he won against the Royals, four and a third in a game against the Indians that he lost. He did go seven innings, striking out nine against the Royals, no decision. Five innings uh, against the Orioles and four and two thirds last time out against the Yankees. In both those games he lost. a called strike finally got the outside corner two and one the count on Fry Fry is 0 for two tonight he's popped to second and going down swinging Thompson to the set here is the two one pitch Fry will pop it up on the infield I hear second baseman Allen Trammell makes the catch for the second out of the inning
second time tonight. Jeff Fry pops out to his counterpart, Alan Trammell, at second base. Two on, two out, and that'll leave it up to Nomar Garcia Parra. Twelve games to go for the Red Sox, counting this one here in Detroit tonight. It's the call there from plate umpire Tim McClellan. One strike to count. are four games over 500 for the year 77 wins 73 losses they start the night still running third in the American League's Eastern Division They're eight and a half behind the Yankees five and a half as mentioned behind the Orioles in the chase for the wild card Red Sox will be seeing plenty of the Yankees and Orioles over the last 10 games of the season goes Garcia Parr and the inning is finally over but the Red Sox pick up three big runs and they've got a three nothing lead now for Roger Clemens after three and a half. I can make money. Complete game summary. Clemens so far with seven strikeouts already for the night's work. Rudy Pemberton a couple of singles and an RBI. Bill Hasselman making his 15th straight start behind the plate. A couple of singles and also an RBI for the Red Sox catcher. Tigers have just the one hit off the rocket. That was an infield single by Alan Trammell with one out on the first. Clemens, who tonight shoots for his 10th win of the year. Roger has won five and lost one in his last seven outings for the Sox. During that streak, he had a 28-inning uh, scoreless streak from August the 1st through the 22nd, which is the longest of the majors this year. And the second best of Rogers' career, he had a 30 and two-thirds scoreless innings back in 1991. His longtime nemesis, Alan Trammell, leads off for the Tigers. Trammell and Whitaker, Trammell and Whitaker, and now there's just Trammell left for the Tigers. And they're saying this will probably be his final year as he takes a call strike. Well, yesterday he was talking about the possibility of coming back for one more year, depending on uh, what happens here in the offseason. Now, and of course, a key member of that 1984 Tiger Championship team. That's the team that jumped off to the 35 and 5 start in April. Tell me about it. Season was over at the end of April for everybody else in the league. Three wild cards. Field made to the first base umpire and new, according to Tim Cheetah. Tim Cheetah says no. It's replay say. Uh, borderline call right there. You might as well give the uh, veteran Trammell a break. 2-1 pitch chopped on the right side. Jeff Fry plants himself at second and throws Alan Trammell out of first. Ten in a row now retired by Roger Clemens. One out in the Tiger fourth inning. Here's Ruben Sierra, the designated hitter. Starts him with a strike. <laughs> CJ Nikowski continues to throw in the bullpen for the Tigers, so he may come on and pitch uh, next inning. He just got back up, making about his second toss. Foul down the first baseline, strike two. Three times this year, Sierra has launched two home runs in a ball game. Last time, June 22nd at Cleveland against the Indians. Cummins has him on the hip, 0-2, fires the fast ball wide, one ball, two strikes. Even 
change things at two and two. Tough pitch to lay off. Close to being strike three. Looks like one more splitter. Got him. That's eight on the night for Roger Clemens. Fastball here from Clemens. It tails away outside part of the plate. Uh, Sierra certainly held up the swing, but the pitch right on the corner. Big high leg kick for Sierra. Did not break the wrist, but it was a call strike. I think Sierra just questioning on whether he swung or it was a call strike. Batter is Tony Clark. Clark swings and misses. Clemens has retired now 11 straight and has struck out eight of them. Clark's trying to tell himself don't chase the high fastball because that's how Clemens has been striking him out. He's faced him four times. He struck him out four times. Foul back. One and two. See what Roger does. Two options: the split finger or the high fastball. Yeah. For the fastball and just misses inside. Sox Tigers bat here bottom half the fifth inning. Let's check our Nissan on deck circle. See what is coming up for the Red Sox. Tomorrow here on Nesson, a one o'clock start, final game of the year between Boston and Detroit. Friday from Yankee Stadium, WABU TV 68 moves in. Fox has the game on Saturday. Nesson on Sunday afternoon at two. And of course ESPN on Sunday night. So. Maybe what I'll do is on Saturday with that Fox game, maybe I'll just take a nice little stroll through Central Park, enjoy the afternoon, the lovely colors. With your transistor radio, of course. Absolutely. Travis Fryman leads off for Detroit to hear against Roger Clemens, who has eaten up the Tigers tonight. Rocket has retired 11 straight, striking out nine. strike on Fryman a strikeout victim back in the second here we are in just the fifth inning and every Tiger starter is a strikeout victim against Clemens with the exception of Alan Trammell and Brad Osmus everybody else has gone down at least once And sends it foul back towards the press box. These are the kind of nights, too, when you're facing a guy like Clemens, you feel like every time, as soon as you step in the box, you have two strikes on you. Clemens strike out high this year, 13 May the 1st against these same Tigers. And came in a ball game at Fenway Park. 
Rogers complete games and down on strikes goes Travis Fryman. That's 10 now for the Rocket. Well, I would say he's got an excellent chance of surpassing that 13 in this ball game here tonight. He just mowing him down. 70 pitches, 43 for strikes. Picks up the outside corner here against Travis Fryman. See that ball tail back on the corner. That's a two-seam fastball from Clemens. Melvin Nieves steps in. Nieves fouls it back. That ball game May 1st at Fenway Park. Clemens with a complete ball game. Beat the Tigers. Struck out 13. Did not walk a batter in the game. Swing and a miss. Nieves quickly down 0 and 2. But I tell you, you feel like you got two strikes on you as soon as you get in the batter's box. That was a nasty split fingered fastball again, down and away. He's had excellent control with that pitch in this game. Clemens has given up just one hit so far tonight. Here's the two strike pitch to Nieves. Sails off the glove of Hasselman and back towards the screen. Ten strikeouts for the Rocket. He has not walked a batter. He's retired 12 in a row. Bring up another. That's 11 now for the Rocket. That was challenge time there. Just the old fastball. I'm going to challenge you with it, see how far you can hit it. And again, swing right through it is Melvin Nieves. Just above the belt, you see the uppercut swing. And not quite make the contact. Look at the hands drop, get underneath the fastball, and Clemens just mows him down. Two gone in the Tiger fifth. Bill Nevin, the third baseman, the batter. First pitch strike. Tigers, as Jerry mentioned earlier, a strikeout team. Clemens, a strikeout pitcher. Nation really working far tonight. 0 and 2. Come and struck out the side back in the second inning. Trying to repeat the feat here in the fifth. Here's the 0 2. Contact foul ball down the right field line towards the Lake Tower. defense really has to concentrate keep on their toes because you get kind of caught up in watching Clemens strike out all these players and uh, this really has been much action for his defense just Bill Hasselman here's the one two swing and a miss he struck him out down goes the side again Clemens 12 strikeouts on the night we played five here in Detroit three nothing Sox Number nine. Top of the six here at Tiger State, and the Red Sox have the three nothing lead. Be in the front row tomorrow night for a salute to legendary running guru Tommy Leonard. We'll also review the tremendous history surrounding the football program at Yale, and Tom Lawson profiles the newest sporting tour coming through Boston, women's pro billiards. So be in the front row tomorrow night at six, right here on Nesson. What kind of guru do they have tomorrow? A tennis guru? No, it was a running guru, wasn't it? Split. Last break up by Clemens. Yeah, split a bad splitter that bounced way out in front of the plate. But of course, when you're punching out as much as the Tigers are, you're chasing just about anything. 12 first pitch strikes uh, by Clemens, and eight of those have turned into strikeouts. That's the kind of night it's been so far for the Tigers. Well, you figure 12 first pitch strikes, he's only faced 16 hitters. Gary, what was that guru now? Is that running guru tomorrow night? Well, I knew if it was a running guru, it was not Norton. I, no. knew, I knew that was not going to be Bob Norton. Yeah, legendary running guru, Tommy, Tommy Leonard. Leonard. Okay. The only previous guru that we had been from was Norton, but I knew, he, I knew he was not into running. One ball, no strikes on Mike Greenwell, who leads off the sixth inning. Oh, 
Schwartz, a two sport star now in doing hockey and football. Yeah, a nice job, too. In the New Hampshire Rhode Island game last Saturday, Greenwell having problems with the left handers tonight. The breaking ball that time from Midkowski, it's 0 2. I saw some of that game last week. Uh, actually, uh, Cy Butler, who used to go to Weston High School, playing for URI. Hampshire won the game 35 26. CJ Nitkowski, second Tiger pitcher to work tonight. Replacing Justin Thompson last inning. Last ball wide to the Gator. Two balls, two strikes. Look out! <laughs> Where did that wind up? Did that get in the booth or not? It just, it just missed. Where did that hit? Where did it hit? <laughs> right here. <laughs> you come up now, Jer. I was behind my monitor. I was all set. Hmm. Keep your eye on things. Three balls, two strikes. Wow. I thought that had us. You had the, the Milwaukee broadcaster, I guess, got nailed with the last. Uh, Don't turn your head. Watch the <laughs> film. Two pitch ground ball base hit right field just under the glove of uh, Alan Trammell and Mike Greenwall hangs in there against the left hander picks up his second hit of the night. A two for three for Greenwell. Uh, Thompson got him the first time on a curveball, but then he got Thompson with a base hit. Now he gets Nitkowski for a base hit, almost the same spot. It's too late in the season to be dodging foul balls in the booth. Why don't you get your coke off there? To, uh, That'd be just, probably a good idea. Just in it? case. You don't have glasses in that case, do you? You no. might want to take that off, too. We're safe now. we got a right-hander up. Rudy Pemberton drives this one to deep left field. Scooting back after it is Bart And he will run it down on the warning track. And that will send Mike Greenwell back to first base. Pemberton sent it a long way, but of course, Barty with excellent speed, and he'll chase it down as somewhere about 390 out toward uh, the right field wall. I should say the left field wall. There's Barty heading back, and plenty of room as he'll get back to the warning track to make the catch. One gone in the Red Sox sixth inning. Here's Bill Hasselman. Looks at a called strike. He runs eight hits for the Red Sox. They've got the three nothing lead. Roger Clemens eating up the Tigers tonight. The Rocket has struck out a dozen. Clemens has given up just an infield single to Alan Trammell. That is the Tiger offense. Greenwell with the lead at first base. Nikowski comes to the plate. Hasselman sends it to right field. Melvin Nieves goes back on the warning track and will make the catch. And once again, Mike Greenwell back to first base. Well, a couple of Red Sox hitters have uh, made a bid tonight. Hasselman there, Pemberton the batter before him, and Conseco earlier in the ball game. But uh, all three right back to the warning track. All right, now here comes another lefty, Bob. Look out. Okay. Long-time Tiger broadcaster Ernie Harwell, when he was on radio, solved the problem by just basically putting up a net. We're working without the safety net tonight. Pitch is a ball. Greenwell is off and has a steal of second base. Golden base for the Gator. Number four for Greenwell on the season. He has not been caught. And again, running on the first move from the left-hander. Osmus has thrown out about 32 percent of the runners but uh, tonight not getting much help from his pitches. One oh pitch. On low two balls no strikes on Bragg who has bounced back to the pitcher and walked so far in his two plate appearances tonight. Now 
Gronkowski looks into Osmus for the sign out of the set. Here's the 2 0 pitch. In the outside corner for a called strike. Team in 1987. Actually, they won the East that year and uh, started strong in '88. Then the bottom fell out, and they really have not uh, contended since. Bragg sends this one high in the air to left field. Bobby Higginson going over. He will make the catch and have the tires aside. Lefty fly ball out off the bat of Red Sox hitters here in the sixth inning. No runs, one hit, no errors. Mike Greenwell, who opened with a single, stranded at first. Still three nothing Sox after five and a half. The body tenses. The pulse quickens. The crowd roars. And the fan waits. Because his devotion Bobby. has just turned deadly. Side her up, Bobby. What do you want from me? I want every time they think of you, they're going to think of me. The fan rated R at Theaters Friday. Silver bullet, it shipped cold to tap the clean taste of the Rockies. Tap the Rockies! Good boy. Good you know, life's unfair. Showing you these freshly baked Pizza Hut pizzas when you're this hungry. A choice of 12 toppings, piping hot, three amazing crusts, unbearably tempting. It's just not fair. But at least these prices are. $7.99 for a medium pizza with one topping or $12.99 for two. Pick up the phone and call us. What's that? Oh, you've already won. Back here in the Motor City where the Red Sox take a 3-0 lead at the bottom of the sixth inning. You want to know why they call Jerry Remy the old pro? Watch your, watch your replay here. Now watch what Jerry does as the pitch is delivered. Actually, they won the East that year. And those the started pitch. strong in 88, then the bottom fell out, and they really have not uh, contended since. Hey, look at that. He ducks behind the monitor. You do that every pitch, don't you? With a left hander at the plate, I do, that's for sure. Now you're safe here. Brad Osmus, a right handed hitter, will lead it off for the Tigers here, bottom half of the sixth inning. Haven't been hit yet, have you? It's been a long time since March 1st, and I have no intentions of getting plucked here the last uh, few games of the season. One guy who really got it here, this, is, this goes back probably 10 years, Larry Osterman was broadcasting with Bill Freehand. And Osterman was a little guy, and he had big, thick glasses, and it hit him right square in the forehead, knocked him right back over. Seat went backwards, his feet goes up on the air, and they had a famous tape of uh, Bill Freehand on the air saying, my partner's been hit, my partner's been hit. <laughs> but he was fine, he finished the ball game. One ball, no strikes on Brad Osmus. Swing and a miss, one and one. 12 strikeouts for Clemens. He's not walked a batter. Gave up just that infield single to Alan Trammell with one out in the first. Here's the 1 1 from the Rocket. Down low. I'll tell you one thing, though, this is a great place to broadcast a game from. It's a fun, it's a fun booth. You are absolutely right on top of the action. I think the best booth ever in terms of safety and being able to see was the old broadcast booth at Fenway Park. Yeah. Yeah, that was a terrific booth. The only thing about that booth, when it was cold, it was cold, and when it was warm, it was real warm in that booth. I think I only worked on that for one year before they put the addition on at Fenway. up high to Osmuth. Three balls, two strikes. 
Another great broadcast location was the uh, former television location at the Boston Garden for hockey. Right at center ice, right on top of the play, is Osmus. Chops this one down the third baseline. That one will roll foul. has retired the last 14 Tigers 12 of them on strikes here's the 3 2 to Osmus and foul over towards the photography location down the first baseline still three balls two strikes. Nice cool night here in uh, Detroit. It should keep uh, Clemens fresh throughout this ball game. Osmus makes contact and drops a base hit into left field. Osmus with a leadoff single here in the Tigers' sixth inning. Let's go back to Nesson Studio, check in with Bob Rogers, see what's new with the Yankees and the Orioles. Bob? Oh, Bob, not a whole lot new. It's pitching dominating this game. Scott Erickson getting Bernie Williams looking. He's working on a shutout. Andy Pettit has given up just one hit. It's 1-0 in the fifth. Yeah, thank you, Bob. Some of us were wondering if they were going to play two. Uh, I thought you had to make it up the earliest possible, but apparently they're playing the two tomorrow. Tomorrow, I guess they're going to play the deuce. Uh, I guess maybe the weather forecast might have been better for tomorrow than today. Why take a chance on the doubleheader today? Mbarti, the hitter. Tigers down by three runs. Osmus takes off and will steal second without drawing a throw. Well, things have been going so much uh, Clemens' way tonight after the base hit by Osmus on the split finger fastball, really not paying any attention to him at all at first base. Hasn't had many base runners on to pay attention to, and instead of standing around with the 3 0 lead, uh, Osmus will take advantage of that. Third stolen base. He's been caught four times this year. Gets in the scoring position. And Barty went down on strikes in the third inning. Steps out to clear his head down quickly to Clemens 0 and 2. Osmus a leadoff single snapping Clemens streak at 14 straight retired at second base now after the steal. He's at second but nobody out. Two strike offering from Clemens and down on strikes goes Barty and the Rocket now with a Baker's dozen 13 strikeouts for the night. Once again, it's the split-fingered fastball, and really, Bartzi has had no chance on that pitch tonight. That's twice that he's got him with the splitter. Bob Higgins in at the top of the order. Third trip to the plate against the Rocket tonight. Looks at one up high. Higginson tonight bounced to second and has been called out on strikes. It's the kind of game, too, Bob, where McCollum, the home plate umpire, gets caught up in it, too. You know, he's getting a lot of strikeouts. Clemens has been around the plate, has not walked anybody. He'll get some calls, too. Clemens has matched his season high, 13, fouled back by Higginson to count even now, 1-1. One one. Clemens struck out 13 Tigers at Fenway on May the 1st. And has matched that total here tonight. the 1-1 one, one. in for strike two. Every Tiger except Osmus and Tramble has struck out. That still holds from earlier in the ball game. Tramble has an infield single and has rolled the second. Osmus rounded to short and has the base hit to left. One-two pitch 
swing and a miss. He struck him out. It's a season high. 14 strikeouts for Clemens tonight. Uh, so far, this has been like a man playing with boys in this game. Again, the split finger fastball down and away, and it's just been uh, really no chance at all for the Tigers. Trammell, of course, had the base hit back in the first inning. Uh, Osmus with the base hit on the split finger fastball, a soft line drive hit. Still only a 3 0 ball game, though. Who's hit to Clemens pretty well over the years at the plate? Campbell came into tonight with a 371 average against the Rocket and has gone one for two. Yeah, of all the guys in the lineup, excuse me, Bob, that he would prefer not to see with a man in scoring position, it's Alan Trammell. Nubbed foul by the Tiger second baseman. One ball, one strike. Bundled up here in the front row at the Tiger Stadium. We have the heat on, by the way, in the broadcast booth. It is a little chilly in the Motor City tonight. Well, we've been here at this time of year where it's been a lot colder than this, that's for sure. a pitch where the veteran Trammell was able to hold off a split finger where not too many other guys in the lineup have been able to do that. In for a strike three and two. Even the fans behind home plate are kind of getting into the strikeouts for Clemens as they uh, they're making the calls themselves. They're making him for McCullen. Here's the payoff pitch, foul back. Small, rather intimate gathering here at Tiger Stadium tonight, but they're seeing a great performance by Roger Clemens. Shows put on this week. How about the uh, battle that Mo Vaughn, Frank Thomas, put on Sunday at Fenway? Here's the 3 2 pitch and fouled off by Trammell. I think Osmus was going on that 3 2 count from second base. see with two outs uh, Red Sox infield is very deep both Garcia Parr and Fry Fry swung over expecting Trammell to hit the ball the other way Osmus holds this time strike three called 15 strikeouts for Roger we played six here in Detroit tonight Sox three Tigers nothing Top of the seventh inning, the Red Sox have a three-nothing lead, and Roger Clemens currently with 15 strikeouts. Here's number 15, a fastball right on the outside corner. Alan Trammell knows it's strike three, even though he's going to try to take one step toward first base. And Roger Clemens, a little pump of the fist. It's on tonight for Clemens. Well, we looked at each other, with the, had the same thing on our mind between innings. We were saying, what's the record? What was 20 was the record. Right. He's got, what, nine outs to record yet. Right. And only needs five strikeouts to tie the record. So it's a good possibility. That's right. Jeff Fry leads off for the Red Sox here at the top of the seventh. Tonight has popped a second, gone down on strikes and popped a second again. Yeah. 
18 outs so far recorded by the Red Sox defensively. Clemens has struck out 15 of the 18. and six to break the record here with three innings to go. Well, he's got three guys coming up next inning, Sierra Clark and Fryman, who he's got twice already. Then he's got Nieves twice, and he's got Nevin twice in this game. So uh, there's a pretty good chance. Yeah, 15 of the last 17 outs have gone via the K. T.J. Nitkowski pitching for the Tigers. 3-1 the count on Jeff Fry. There's ball four. Tiger pitching tonight. That's the first issued by Nitkowski. Red Sox get their leadoff man aboard. Well, Garcia Parra has been struggling. Let's see if uh, Kennedy asks him to sacrifice here and get a man in a scoring position with the big guns coming up. Oh, for his last 16 and has not had a hit against the lefty this year. out for a word now with Nitkowski. Red Sox with three runs, eight hits, all three runs coming in the fourth inning. In the last inning that Justin Thompson was on the hill for the Tigers. High held by Clark at first. Ciaparo looks at ball two. Little hit and run action uh, might help guys see a power. Sometime when you're struggling, it helps you concentrate more on making contact. Opens up a hole in the infield. Don't usually put that play on two and oh. You usually give the uh, hitter a, a pitch that he can maybe drive, and certainly guys see can do that, pick out his own. More likely on a 2 1 count, you see a hit and run. Instead, the count will go 3 0. Nikowski walked Fry in danger of walking Garcia Parra with the power of a lineup. Vaughn and Conseco do up next. Here's the 3 0 pitch. And it's up high for ball four, and the Red Sox with two aboard, and the big guns coming up. Rick Adair out to uh, have a conversation with uh, Nikowski. No activity in the bullpen for the Tigers. Buddy Bell just signing a contract extension uh, with the Tigers. They've been very pleased with the uh, patience and the work that he's had with a fairly young ball club. And highly regarded. Stepped into a situation here with the ball club obviously rebuilding. Tigers had had just one manager, Sparky Anderson, since 1979. A long summer uh, here in Detroit, but as uh, Jerry mentioned, uh, Bell has been highly regarded by the Tiger Brass and rewarded with a contract extension. A.J. Sager just starting to loosen up uh, for the Tigers. One of the few pitches that did not work in the ball game last night. Here's Mo Vaughn with two on and nobody out. Vaughn singles to left field. Rounding third is try held there by Dave Oliver. And the Red Sox now have loaded the bases with nobody out. A couple of walks and a base hit by Mo have set the table for Conseco. Eight-game hitting streak now by Vaughn, and of course with nobody out in the inning, Oliver not going to take the chance of having the first out made at home plate. Looks like they're trying to waste some time here. Sager obviously not ready. He just started throwing. He's only made maybe seven or eight pitches down in that bullpen.
And again, time time off, yeah. Yeah. Osmus again going back out to kill some more time. Let's go back to Ernesto Studios quickly. Check in with Bob Rogers. He was new with the Yankees and Orioles. Bob? Well, guys, it's a pitching duel all the way around. The Yankees do come back to tie it. It's a little fielder's choice. Cal Ripken will make the force out. That allows a run to score, and it's 1-1. The Yankees and Orioles tied up in the sixth. Okay, thank you, Bob. Again, the Yankees with a three-game lead over the Orioles as they get that big three-game series underway in the Bronx tonight. And we continue to waste time here. And finally, Buddy Bell will make his way out of the Tiger dugout as Sager continues to get warm-up tosses in. They're just stalling to get the pitcher in the bullpen ready because they have no intention of letting Nitkowski, the left-hander, pitch to Conseco in this situation. Bell wants the ball. That will do it for Nitkowski. They'll get the right-hander on now to pitch to Jose. We'll take a break. Back with more baseball from Detroit right after this. Detroit with the Red Sox with a 3 0 lead over the Tigers have loaded the bases with nobody out here in the top of the seventh inning. Wade was going to the bullpen and handed the ball over to A.J. Sager. Sager making appearance number 18 on the season. He has uh, made nine starts, a record of 3 and 4, 5.02 ERA, 77 hits allowed in 66 in the third innings, 44 strikeouts, 27 walks, opponents hitting 293. Off Sager. The last time he worked in the game was on the 12th of September. That was against the New York Yankees. Two and a third innings in that ball game. Well, Ninkowski head down in the Tiger dugout. Walking Fry, walking Garcia Parra, giving up the single to Vaughn, so he leaves with the bases loaded. Ninkowski's line, two plus innings, no runs, three hits so far, but he's responsible. For the base runners, as Conseco bats here with the bases loaded and nobody out. A.J. Sager, Anthony Joseph Sager, graduate of the University of Toledo, on the hill now for the Tigers. Pitch to Conseco, ground ball, third base, steps on the bag for one, back to the plate. They need to tag here. And they get it on Fry for the double play. Conseco is safe at first on the fielder's choice. You see this very often where a Nevin will go over and tag third base to get the force play and then come back home to get the uh, lead runner. Obviously, this becomes a tag play for Osmus. He's out in front of the plate. Fry will uh, not even attempt to knock the ball out of the glove and very big double play. Perfectly made for the tag to third and throw to home. And a couple of big outs for A.J. Sager. Still two on with two outs for John Ballington though. Ballington looks at a cold strike. There's a story of this ball game tonight. Roger Clemens, the Rocket, has mowed down 15 Tigers so far. Through six plus innings. One and one to count on John Valentin, who's one for three tonight. So seventh inning stretch time here in Detroit. The Red Sox lead the Tigers 3-0. To everyone who drives to the airport, we'd like to announce an incredible improvement to the Callahan Tunnel. It's behind the scenes tour. Makes a great trip, a uh, field trip for school. Sit in the Sox dugout, touch the Green Monster. Tours run Monday through Friday, 10, 11, 12, and 1. There's a 2 o'clock tour on non-game days. For information and group reservations, call 617-236-6666. It has been strikeout night at the ballpark tonight. Roger Clemens with 15 so far through the first six innings on the mound. 
Facing uh, three guys, Ruben Sierra, Tony Clark, and Travis Fryman here in the seventh, that he's already struck out twice each tonight. Well, Bob, we've been caught up, obviously, in the Clemens thing, and we should be with all the strikeouts, but still only a 3 nothing ball game, and the Red Sox just had a bases-loaded situation where they didn't get any runs with nobody out. Foul back by Sierra, one strike to count. And some of the other scores going on around baseball tonight, but the big one as far as the Sox are concerned, of course, involving the Orioles and the Yankees in New York. You know, Sox loaded the bases in the top half of the inning, were unable to add to the three-nothing advantage. Although the way Clemens has gone thus far, three uh, at this point has been enough. Some of the scores in the National League. The other league. Ground ball right side, so Sierra in this situation avoids the strikeout, makes contact, and grounds out to Jeff Fry at second base. Well, actually, if Roger's not thinking about even tying or breaking the record, it doesn't hurt at this stage of the game to get a couple of quick, easy outs. Good guys are swinging some first pitches. Next time Clemens is going to go on the three days rest against the Yankees on Sunday, I would imagine pitching in game two of that uh, doubleheader. And the last eight outs prior to that had been recorded by at the strikeout. It was mentioned 15 of 17 coming into the seventh inning. Here's Tony Clark. High fastball, and Clark will never catch that. Clark has had absolutely no chance in his uh, five at bats this season against Clemens. Maybe it was six at bats now, I believe. Pitch is up high. Count is even 1-1. One one. Coming struck out two in the first inning. The side in the second. Two more in the third. Two more in the fourth. The side in the fifth. Three more last inning. Sierra able to make contact here leading off the seventh. Swing and a miss by Clark again. A late swing. One ball, two strikes. Here's Clark facing a 1-2 pitch from Clemens. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Clemens gets number 16. Up high with a couple of fastballs and then down low with the splitter. Down and out of the strike zone. Fryman has really been, I should say, uh, Trammell's the only guy that's been able to lay off that pitch all night. He's got a sense that he's in tight uh, to tying his own record. 16 strikeouts as Travis Fryman takes the first pitch strike. This is one of the few sliders that Clemens has thrown in this ball game. Swing and a miss. It's 0-2. into the heavens muttering to himself as Clemens goes after his 17th K of the night one ball two strikes here's the one two and it's up high Pitch from the rocket, swing and a miss. He struck him out. 17 for Clemens. One, two, three. Go the Tigers in the seventh inning. Still three nothing Red Sox. 